Later. Go ahead and practice how to count by twos, which is our new pattern of counting. So remember, it's two, four, six. Anybody remember what will come after two, four, six? Eight. Eight. Um, what comes after eight? Ten. Ten. And remember, it starts all over again. Ten. Twelve. Twelve. Fourteen. Fourteen. Asa? Sixteen. Sixteen. And? Eighteen. Eighteen. And then what will come after eighteen? Just so I can go all the way. After eighteen will be? Um, Your next ten always comes after eight. Twenty. Good. So let's count it out. So. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Keep going. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. Twenty-six. Twenty-eight. Thirty. Keep going. Thirty-two. Thirty-four. Thirty-six. Thirty-eight. Forty. Forty-two. Forty-four. Forty-six. Forty-eight. Fifteen. Good. So remember, if you remember the pattern two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, ten. That's the easiest way to count by twos. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and practice before and after numbers. So I have the number thirty-six. What's the one number that comes after thirty-six? We're gonna move a little faster, huh? Thirty-seven. Yes, our pace is gonna pick up a little bit. Seventeen. What's one less? Then 17, Asa? 16. 16, and then 49. What's one more than 49, Braylee? 50, good. Count the dimes. Count them to yourself. Don't say the answer. Count your dimes. All right, let's count our money out. Okay, Elijah, can you count it for us? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90 cents. 90 cents. And what coin is this again? Dimes. Dimes. dimes? These are dimes. Count by tens. Good. All right, let's count the pennies. Oh, well, let's say what it was. That was my stack. Okay, next coin. Seven counted for us. So one. No, I'm not asking the coin. I'm asking who you just counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
How much? Six cents. And guys, remember to always put your cents symbol, okay? As I'm grading your test, that's what I am looking for. That cents, that cents symbol lets us know that this is money on your test. Do you lose points if you don't put your cents sign? Yeah, you do. Yeah. So make sure to put that cents sign. Friday, you said. No, I, I had already addressed that earlier. I said it was a mistake. Did everybody hear me not say that? Okay. All right. So on last week, um, your videos that you had to watch that day I was out, Asa, that was a video where I covered the clock. Did you look at that video that discussed the clock? Okay, so we'll just go ahead and review that. So remember, a clock is used to tell time. If we want to know what time it is, we will look at a clock. So this is a regular clock. There are two different types of clocks. There's the clock that we read that has the face, and then there's a digital clock, which usually is on a phone or something like that. So those clocks are usually a lot easier to tell time because they tell you exactly what time it is. But with a clock like this, we have to read and know how to properly read the clock so that we can tell the right time. So remember, every clock has two hands, right? Our long hand is what we call the minute hand. That tells us how many minutes we are into the hour. And our short hand is what we call the hour hand. That tells us exactly what hour we are on. The minute hand is usually used with fives and the hour hand is usually used with ones. And, I'll, and when we get into uh, telling more different time, uh, I'll explain more of that, but just keep that in mind. So we learned how to tell time to the hour, okay? So 12 is our number that we were focusing on. Anytime your long hand, your minute hand is on 12, that's a brand new hour on the clock. You're entering into a brand new hour. Every single time that long hand touches that 12, it's a brand new hour. And usually when we say that, we say O clock. And when we write it in numbers, it looks like zero, zero, because it's a brand new hour. We're not in at any time yet. So it's zero, zero. Once we know that our long hand is on 12, we know that that means o'clock, zero, zero. All we have to figure out next is what number our hour hand is pointing to to figure out what hour it is. So in this case, if it's pointing to nine, can anyone tell me what time this would be? What time would this be? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay, what if, about, what if I switch my hour hand to a five? What time would it be then if I switch the hour hand to five? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. What if I switch my hour hand to 11? 11. What time would it be then? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. And one more. If I switch my hour hand to uh, one, what time would it be if I switch the hour hand to one? One o'clock. One o'clock. Good. So I think we know how to tell time by the hour is just paying attention to your hands. So your book will ask you to read it, but it will also ask you how to write it. That's why I'm showing you how to write it. Anytime it's o'clock. If it's nine o'clock, that means you need to have your long hand on 12 to show o'clock. And then you need to have your hour hand on nine or whatever hour it is telling you to mark in your book. Okay. All right, so that is the clock that we learned on last week. Good job. So we have one more part of our lesson today. So whenever we divide numbers, so we have a bunch of numbers. We know that when we're counting, when we're writing, there's a ton of numbers. Some numbers have specific names we call them. Some numbers are what we call even numbers, and some numbers are what we call odd numbers. So that is what we're going to start learning now, even and odd numbers. Yes? Pumpkin. Like the, the vegetable? Pumpkin? Wait, the vegetable? Yeah, I don't think it's a fruit. Yeah, that was it? The eggs are the eggs are the Oh no, pumpkin, P-U-M-P-K-I-N, okay? 
All right. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. So we have even numbers and we have odd numbers. Today we are going to focus on what's called even numbers. So whenever we say that a number is even, what I mean by that is that it's in it's a number that I can split equally on both sides. So it is called an even number. If I have a number and when I split it in half, meaning I split it in two, if I have the same amount on both sides, it is called an even number. Let me show you what I mean by that. You may understand what I show you. So for example, I have the number two. When I split two in half, how many do I have on each side? One, one and one. So two would be an even number because I can split it evenly, equally. It's not like I have two on one side and one on the other side. No, when I split two in half, it's even on both sides. It's one here, one here, that's an even number. So that's what it means by even number. It's numbers that when you split it equally, it's split into two on the same side. Let's look at another one. Let's look at the number three. So look at three. So I have three here now. I'm gonna split it in half. Look at this. I have two and I have one. Is that even? No. Is that equal? No. So will three be an even number? Nope, it is not. Because when I split it, I don't have the same amount on both sides. It's not even, it's unbalanced. It's only one here, but two here, that's not even. So it's actually an odd number, which we'll learn tomorrow. Okay, next, look at this, I have four. Let me split four in half. Is it even? Yeah. I have two and two, is this equal? Yeah. So that means four is a what? Even number, four is an even number as well. Okay, let's look at five. We'll just keep going down the numbers. Let's look at five. So I have five here. I'm gonna split it in half. Is that even? Nope, I have three and I have two. That's not even, that's not equal. So five is not an even number. It has to be the same amount on both sides in order for it to be considered an even number. Let's look at six. Six, let's look at it. I'm gonna split it. Uh -huh. Is it even? Uh -huh. Yes, when I split six in half, how many do I have? Three and so that means six is an even number because when I split six in half, I have the same amount on both sides. Two. Yeah, and do y'all not see the pattern of the numbers? Okay, let's go to seven. No. Let's split seven in half. No. No. Is it even? No. Nope, I have four and three, so therefore this cannot be an even number. Okay, let's look at eight. I knew it. two. Let's look at eight. Let's split it. Is it even? I have four and four. It's equally split, so that means eight is an even number. Two, four, six. We might be going to 10. Let's look at 9. I have 9. No. No? Not even number. 5 and 4, not even. It's not equal on both sides, so this is not an even number. Let's look at 10. It's an odd number. That's 10. So we have 10. Yeah. Is it? Yes. yes. It is. Five and five. So this is an even number. Ten is an even number. So two, four, six, eight, ten. So really, I want to focus on just the zero part of ten, and I'm going to explain why tomorrow I'll explain that. But these are examples of even numbers. Two, four, six, eight, zero. Okay? And I'm going to switch it up, and I'm going to say zero first. They are equal. They have the same amount on both sides. So 
so they are called even numbers. I can split it perfectly down the middle and it will have the same amount on both sides. So it is considered an even number. So zero, two, four, six, eight. So this is usually the song we sing. We say even numbers are zero, two, four, six, eight. That's our song we sing usually every year. And then when we learn odd tomorrow, we'll add on to that. So let's sing it together. So after me, so even numbers are zero, two, four, six, eight. Let's sing it again together. Even numbers are zero, two, four, six, eight. Yes, that's important to remember. And I'm going to explain why tomorrow when we learn odd. And I'll show you the difference between the two. But this is important. So one more time, what are the even numbers? Even numbers are zero, two, four, six, eight. Awesome. All right, so this is it for math on today. We learned a new thing, which are even numbers. Tomorrow we will learn the opposite of even numbers, which are odd numbers. Even numbers, we can split equally down the middle. We'll have the same amount on both sides. Odd numbers, unfortunately, is not that way. And we'll talk about that on tomorrow, okay? All right, so that is it for our math lesson on today. Let's go ahead and move on to our letters book. We're learning cursive letter, capital T. Capital T on today. Page 33 in your book, capital T.
All right, let's go ahead and practice capital letter T. So first thing I do is I start here on the red line. This is a capital letter, so it will fill the entire line. Capital T also does connect to other letters. So just keep that in mind. First thing you do is you start up here. You're going to loop all the way down to the middle line. You're going to curve around up. Then you're going to slant here. You're going to curve down. Well, not curve, but go straight down, but like in a diagonal loop. Kick it out again. Here, here. See, one more. Yeah, your name starts with T. Yeah. Okay, do we already know T? Hey, so you know T already? Yeah. yeah, this is really just review. I know you know all the letters. You just got to practice. All right, I'll give you a little bit of time to work on that, guys. You can start with the warm-up at the top. Then go ahead and practice your letter. You can begin what? for this week. All right, so last week, well, week before that, we practiced our sentences with the days of the week inside of them. Remember, a day of the week is a proper noun. So therefore, when you write a day of the week inside of a sentence, you have to do what to it? capitalize it so this week we are moving on to the months of the year right because when we write a month a month is also a proper noun when you say the actual name of the month that is considered a proper noun so therefore when you write a month in a sentence guess what you have to do capitalize it so let's go ahead and go over the months remember we have 12 months in one year so we have January, January, February, March, March April, April, May, June, July, July August, August, September, October, October November, November, December. December. Okay, so these are our 12 months, and we will now see the months inside of our sentences. Whenever you have a month inside of your sentence, it is a proper noun. It's a special name of something. So you capitalize it whenever you have it in your sentence, okay? So I have three sentences today. I will let you do all three of them on your own on today, all three. Okay, so number one says, in December, Tom will get a new bike. I have two proper nouns in here. Could anyone tell me what are my two proper nouns? In December, Tom will get a new bike. What are the proper nouns? December of the month and time. So guys, make sure when you're writing it over, what are you capitalizing? December and time. All right, I'll be looking for that when I check it. Number two, summer begins in May. Summer begins in May. What is my proper noun in this sentence? May. May is another month. And then number three, January is the first month. January is the first month. What is our proper noun in this one, Asa? January. January, which is a month. Good. Okay, so guys, you can go ahead and do all three of them. I did read them. You read them over before you write them as well, making sure you're capitalizing your proper nouns. And then I will check them, okay? One. All right, so number one, in December, Tom will get a new bike. How do I write this one the correct way, Kendall? First, right here. First letter, capitalize I. Capitalize my D in December. What's the word? What's the word? And O that says uh. Okay, next. T and Tom. Guys, remember that T and Tom. Okay, how do we finish it? Good. So we had December was our month. Make sure we capitalize December. Number two, summer begins in May. Cairo, how would I write this in the correct way? Just come on. Capitalize first letter S in summer. May is our month, the M in May. Look, the sounds are up here, so you shouldn't get it wrong. Okay, number three, January is the first month. Okay, how do I write this one correctly? First letter J, not only is it because of the first letter, but because this is also a month, and how do I finish it? Mm -mm, I E E. Period. Good. So, how we have it? 
Yep. All right. So that's what we'll be practicing this week. Tomorrow we'll practice some more. Let's go ahead and move on to our phonics lesson for today. All right, so we will go ahead and get started on our phonics charts. Yeah, we're going for seven and eight, and I'm introducing nine on today. All right, let's look at chart seven here. One second. And come on, hurry up. This word? Turkey. Turkey. Next one. And we got to turn ten. Are you going to do those two? Then look right here in the center. Come right here, like right here. So everybody, not you, let's look at him. Right here, so everybody can see. And right here. That's not perfect. All right, let's begin with BR. BR says, brr, brr, brr. Dr. 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 Okay, Asa, did you say chart seven? Yes. All right, we're on chart eight now. Can you go for the back? Pass and pass and watch it. Yeah. Okay, THR. THR says third, third, third in three. AR says R, R in stars. CH says ch, ch, ch in church. O, o U says and out. O W says ow, 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 in owl. O W says o, 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 in bold. E R says er, 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 in verse. Hold it so they can see. U R says er. All right, let's look at Okay, faith. If I have run, how would I turn it to runner? O I says oi, 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 in coin. O I says oi, 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 in boy. O O says uh, 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 in book. O O says ooh, 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 in two. W O R says were 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 in warm okay. I G H says I I I in night. A L L says all 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 in ball. A L K says up 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 in wall. All right, awesome. So before I introduce shirt nine, let's go over some blends first. So I have sto because there's anyone create a word with sto. Stove. 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 You can come and write it. Stove. Stove.
All right, next word I have cla, cla, Asa. Plot. Plot, good, plot. Next I have swear, I know, swear. Switch. Not a word. Wait, wait. Swear. Okay, not sure. Swim. Let's just say swim. Okay, come right swim. The mark is right there. Swim. All right, good. Thank you, Dennis. So T A K E R. Now we do still have an E, but that's because why? The special sound. The mark is right there. Special sound. Okay, next I have does. Does. Avaya, could you turn does into does? But it's over there. E-O-E-E-D. E-D, good. So we took off this E and then we just added E-D. Dose. Next I have ride. Let's turn it into riding. Riding. R-Y-D-N-G. Good. We take off that E and we just add I-N-G. Good. So now we have two rules that we've learned when adding a suffix. So the first one is if there's a short vowel consonant, we double our consonant. This rule says if we have a long vowel and a silent E, we drop the E and then we add our suffix. In today's workbook, you will practice that as well. So just keep that in mind, guys. If you have that silent E, you take off the E, okay? All right, so that's it for fun. Let's go ahead and move on to our language lesson. We're adding list five and six on today for pronouns. Um, you'll get a little sleep paper to add this, guys, so get that paper ready. All right, next blend, scree, scree, scream, scream. Can you push your chair in so that he can pass? Scream, sit right there. No, where's your paper where you had all of them? Uh... And I know. Well, that's on y'all. That's fine. Okay. Okay, scream. Scream. Good. So that's creating words with blends. All right. So today I want to introduce our next phonics chart to you. So we've covered chart six all the way through eight. Today we will introduce chart nine, which is um, it's a newer chart. I know we y'all didn't cover that in kindergarten. So this is a new chart to everyone. Um, and we also will learn something different than a special sound. We have some other things on our charts that are not considered special sounds. So this is what chart nine looks like. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say the sound first, and then I want you to say it after me. Okay. So ing says ing 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 and pointing. K n says and not. G n says and not. A N G says ang 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 and bang. I N G says ing 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 and king. O N G says ong 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 and long. U N G says ung 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 and strong. A N K says ank 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 and bank. I N K says ink 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 and wink. O N K says onk 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 and honk. You, I'm sorry. U N K says onk 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 and trunk. U N K says onk 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 and 
W-A says walk, 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 and wash. A says uh, 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 and adopt. Y says E, 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 and baby. L E says and little. L E says E D says Ed 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 and wanted. E D says t -t -t and looked. E D says d d d and played. Okay, good. So this is phonics chart nine. And so we do have a lot of special sounds, but we also have something different on chart nine. And I, you can see the difference. So look at this first sound here on chart nine, which is ing that says ing and pointing. What does this ing have that all the other sounds do not have? Do you see what's different between this one and all the rest of them? What does it have that the other sounds do not have? No, that's not it. No, if he, why would you say the same thing he just said? And I said, no, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. The line, it has this little line here. Do you see that line on any of these sounds? No. no and on any of our other charts, we did not have that. This sound has a line and these three sounds have a line. But that is because these sounds are actually not special sounds. They are something totally different. This line here is not called a line as well. It is called a hyphen. Say that, hyphen. So this little line here is what we call a hyphen. This hyphen, the line, lets us know that we are adding this to another word. Look at pointing. Does anyone know what the word is before I added this ing? What word was it before I added ing and it turned into pointing? What word was it? It was point. But this line here, this hyphen tells us to add ing. And when I add ing to point, it becomes pointing. This right here with the hyphen and these three down here with the hyphen are what we call suffixes. They are not special sounds. They are suffixes. Say that suffixes they are called a suffix a suffix is a word you add to the end of a word so like for example like i just showed you we have points and then what did we add at the end I ing that's because this ing ing is what we call a suffix it is not a special sound and we know that because of the hyphen the hyphen is letting us know that is not a special sound now all of these are special sounds but this is not a special sound. So this ing is what we call a suffix. Now, in order for you to have a suffix ing, you have to have a starting word, which point was our starting word, but it's called a root word. So your root word is the word that you begin with. It's a word that is a word on its own. And then when you add a suffix, it creates a brand new word. So for example, Point is our root word because point is a word, right? Yes. But then when I add suffix ing, I created a new word and point became pointing. So this ing is what we call a suffix. We add it to the end of root words. So guys, I will no longer call these words, like when we have the ing, I'm going to call it a root word and suffix. I'm not going to say your starting word. It's going to be your root word and your suffix, okay? So for example, point was the root word. Then I added ing suffix, ing, it became pointy. So I have some examples here. We'll do it with on here for one second.
right, so let's go ahead and practice adding a suffix to some of these words. All right, so look at my root word here. I have shout. And my suffix I'm adding is ing. So if I have the root word shout and I want to add the suffix ing, who can tell me what word it will become? So I have shout, root word, plus ing, suffix. Asa, what word does it become? Shouting. shouting. Good, shouting. Look at that, shouting. Next, I have sing, plus suffix ing, ing. Root word is sing, plus the suffix ing, ing. What word does it become? Singing. So I have sing and then ing, ing. Next, I have try. Then I want to add suffix ing ing to try the root word. What word does it become? Trying. Good. So that's how we add them together. We have our root word, then we add our suffix, and now we have a new word. Your root word is your starting word. It's your word you begin with. Your suffix is what you're adding to the end of the word. And in this case, our suffix is ing. We will learn other suffixes, but right now we're only learning suffix ing that says ing. So now I want to show you how we mark root words and suffixes because we do not mark it the same way we mark special sounds. Usually when we have a special sound or a vowel, we simply mark the vowels and we circle the special sounds. But with root words, we do it a little different, okay? I'm going to put some words here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh-uh, don't do that, don't do that. Okay, so remember, we have our root word and our suffix, okay? So let's look at parking. What's my root word in parking? Let's see who knows how to identify the root word already. What's the root word in parking? Park, and what's the suffix? I-N-G. I so whenever we mark root words and suffixes, we always underline our root word, park, and we circle the suffix ing. This is how we mark it every single time. We underline the root word, circle the suffix. Underline the root word, circle the suffix, okay? So let's look at crying. What's my root word in crying? Please stop. What's the root word in crying? Cry. Cry? What do I do to show the root word? Circle. Mm -hmm. Uh, a Underline, cry, Underline, and then cry. what's the suffix? I-N-G. And how do I show the suffix I-N-G? It. Circle it. it. Underline your root word, circle your suffix. Next, I have walking. 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 What's my root word in walking? Walk. Walk. How do I show the root word? What do I do? Underline, Underline the root word, and what's my suffix? I-N-G. I-N-G, and what do I do? Circle, Circle the suffix. Next, I have picking. Picking. What's the root word in picking? What do I do Underline to show? It. Underline the root word. What's the suffix? I-N-G. Circle it. And circle suffix I-N-G. Good. So this is how we mark root words and suffixes, okay? Your root word is your starting word, the word you began with. Your suffix is what you add to the end of it. And in this case, our suffix is I-N-G. There are others, but today we're learning only I-N-G, okay? So that is it for our phonics lesson today, guys. Tomorrow we'll practice root words and suffixes again, and we'll get into syllables on tomorrow as well, okay? All right, Asa, so that's it for our morning Zoom. I'll see you this afternoon where we cover the rest of our lessons for today, okay? Bye-bye.